Hello and hi to everyone who are watching me right now. Myself Ms. Nidhi Purana and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to study 2.1 poem but before I let you know the title of the poem I would like to highlight that this quote is quoted by like everyone from Winston Churchill to President Barack Obama from Nelson Mandela to US prisoners of war in Vietnam to Mahatma Gandhi. It has lent its title to a movie starring Morgan Freeman, which is right now streaming on Netflix as well. Invictus by William Ernest Henley is often quoted during the time of trouble and its triumphant tone and uplifting message is sure to hear about. So, let us take a look about the poet William Ernest Henley who had written this beautiful poem Invictus. Moving ahead with it. About the poet William Ernest Henley he had written this poem in which is in the year 1875 yes in the year 1875 this particular poem was written by William Ernest Henley and the time when he had written this particular poem he was going through lot of things this is one of his popular work it's a life changing poetry and this poem has inspired some of the greatest minds in history like you have just heard it right So during the speech of Winston Churchill he had once affirmed the strength and the resilience of this constituents we are still masters of our faith we are still captain of our soul these were his words okay so uh, william ernest henley knew a thing got to about the suffering and fighting for survival he was just 12 years old the poet had diagnosed with bone tuberculosis which is a very rare form of disease that had affected the skeletal system and um, in later uh, 1860s the tb had progressed to the point where his left leg had to be amputated matlab ki unke jo left leg hai usse nikalna pada okay so the treatment plan was successful but the road to henley's recovery remained very long and painful and he was confined in a hospital for a long period of time and during that period he wrote numerous poem about his ordeal many of which were published in a book known to be as in hospital So this Invictus was written in 1875, which was supposed to be a part of the poetry collection, but due to some reason, the 16-line masterpiece poem didn't quite make a cut. The poem was eventually published in 1888 as a part of Henley's book of verses. At that time, this poem was not having the name, but after the movie starring, uh, based on you know Nelson Mandela, this poem had got its name. Okay. So Nelson Mandela while he was in prison he recited the poem in Victors and was said to have been empowered by its message of self mastery in 2009 feature of in Victors the poem is referred several times moving ahead and let's see what the poem is all about okay so in this particular poem it is very strong and descriptive language students it's very much important ki aap poem padhne se pehle uske bare mein uske poet ke bare mein if you write an appreciation about the poet it really fetches you a good marks okay so this poem is having a descriptive language and extravagant metaphors help clearly convey the theme of the poem to which never lose hope no matter what the circumstances how you control your fate and decide your future is in your hands and that is what the poet has given the message to us through this poem now talking about what exactly the poem is all about let's recite the poem quickly hear it out in my tone and then we will head further with line by line analysis of the poem this video might be little bit uh, you know big but please take your time and watch till end ye poem thoda sa difficult side pe hai to understand but at the same time this is really very meaningful and a life changing poem So let's recite it and then we'll analyze the poem. Out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under my blood churnings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. it masters not how straight the gate how charged with punishments the scroll i am the master of my fate i am the captain of my soul so beautiful words right you all will agree with me on this point right let's see ye jo poem ka title hai invictus uska matlab kya hota hai so invictus means unconquerable actually students this is a latin adjective jisme invictus ka matlab hota hai unconquerable ya undefeated 
Okay, this poem is about the courage in the face of death and holding on to one's own dignity despite the indignities life places before us. As I told you, that poet William Ernest Henley, ne, jab ye poem likha tha, he was going through a lot many things in his life. And that's the reason this poem has actually motivated him. So this poem is full about courage when even when the death is there in front of you. Okay, moving ahead with line by line analysis of this poem. So out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. So what is happening over here, my dear students? In this particular thing, you know, what does the poet is trying to say in the first two lines? That even in this, uh, you know, little situation, the dark situation, he speaks about the night in the first line, out of the night that covers me. So he is talking about the darkness over here. Out of the night that covers me means the darkness that is so hellish. Okay, it blankets everything in sight. Okay, so this is a metaphor which he has used for the feeling of helplessness, for the feeling of hopelessness or maybe even depression. Okay, but what does he say is that instead of dwelling, black as spit from pole to pole. Pole to pole means from North Pole to South Pole. It is completely black. I have no way to go. Instead of dwelling or surrendering to those feelings, what does he do? He looks at things in a different way. Kya bol rahe hai wo in the last two lines? I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. So, yaha pe he is thanking. Okay? He is thanking for whatever the choice he has made, whatever the action that has uh, God has decided for him. So, he is happy with it. Okay? He is thanking God for the unconquerable soul. Yeah? He is thankful for his quality, for the unconquerable soul. So, this is like a ability of a human being that no matter what comes into your way, every problem is having the solution with it. You need to believe it. Your soul is unconquerable. Anyone can control you, but no one can control your soul. That is what the poet is trying to say. Okay? So, if you have missed any video, it's better that you subscribe it. So, from next time onwards, you don't miss it. There are many live lectures and uh, in fact, many videos post it on the channel so go through it and watch it up if you you know really like my work understand it well drop a comment i would be really happy to see it moving ahead with the next stanza comes in the fell clutch of circumstance i have not winced nor cried aloud under the blood yearnings of chance my head is bloody but unbowed so what is the poet trying to say that i have not expressed my grief you know even when i had to suffer great uh, pain in the fell clutch of circumstance. Circumstance means various events. Yeah. There are many negative things that had happened in life of poet. Yeah. But his spirit was never broken. He is a person who always believes into the miracle. He have not winced nor cried aloud. Yeah. So he have not winced. Winced means he have never uh, showcased the pain. He have never uh, cried. He have never given up. Under the blood churnings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. So what he is trying to say, the word, uh, he has used the word blood churnings. You know, this brings to mind the idea of feeling beaten down by life basically. That life has beaten us down so many times. Yet, even while such events may be unavoidable, what we can do? Yeah, it all depends upon how we reacted to them. My head is bloody but unbowed. Head is bloody means completely messed up. There are too many things going inside your head. But you are still unbowed. You have not given up. That is what the poet is trying to say. That I have faced many setbacks and losses for which there was no reason. But I am still unbowed. I am standing up straightly, strongly and never given up. Further, the poet says... Beyond this place of rat and tears. Rat and tears means anger. And the cries. Looms but the horror of the shade. Looms means hanging. Okay. So, you know, uh, there are a lot of things that are happening. So, in the second line of the stanza, it says, Looms but the horror of the shade is a reference to facing one mortality. Yeah. Horror of the shade is nothing but the mortality. We all know that we are here. Then one day, we won't be there in between such environment. Yeah, if there is a bird, then the person is also going to die one or the other day. So that's what the uh, reference is done to facing one's mortality. Mortality is nothing but the death. But again, you know, these years of suffering or menace, okay, uh, the sufferings that has been there 
through years and years that were enough to break the poet but he was still standing strong yeah just as sure as the poet has faced the trials with courage and you know with strength he is assuring to us to the readers that any challenge he will face in the future will be met with the same resoluteness yeah basically the poet is trying to say that in the future maybe koi aise circumstances aate hai even after years of menace years of sufferings you shall always find me unafraid yeah this challenges shall always find him unafraid he is never going to bow down in front of them okay aapko yahan pe nelson mandela ka image dikh raha because this is what nelson mandela has done for his nation he was always fighting and he said it very clearly that no matter what the circumstances are thrown towards me but you will always find me unafraid okay so that's what it means moving ahead to the next stanza the last one probably so it matters not how straight the gate how charged with punishments the scroll i am the master of my fate i am the captain of my soul you know students this is one of my favorite uh, stanza iska meaning jab aap sunoge na aapko bhi ye bahut acha lagega stanza so this is a uh, you know we have finally reached to the climax in the final stanza here the uh, poet that is william ernest henley he borrows the concept now from the bible basically it says it matters not how straight the gate appears to be a uh, response to matthew okay this is a, a biblical passage in the bible it was written that we all have to go towards the root of heaven yeah we need to walk the narrow path that is a good path yeah we need to walk towards the straight or uh, straight the gate that means towards the heaven the next line says how charged with punishments the scroll yeah so basically uh, this is a religious idea of our scenes being weighed when we enter the afterlife right bola jata hai na ki hamari afterlife jo hai agar aap yahan kuch scenes means pap karoge to bas aapko fir wo kadai mein dal kar they will fry you up like a pakoras yeah so this is a very ancient saying into our religious idea that you know all the scenes all the mistakes which you are doing uh you have to pay for it so a poet is trying to say no matter how charged with punishments the scroll is okay but i am never going to i'm never going to give up yeah the tally on the scroll will determine where we go heaven or hell hai na aise hi hota hai ki aap heaven jaoge ya hell jaoge ye scroll pe depend karega ki aapne paap kitne kiye hain ya punya kitne kiye hain but the poet says i am the master of my fate i am the captain of my soul yet the invictus tells us that these things actually don't matter to him these things are not any more mattering to a poet he is not going to let such standards determine the course of his life wo ye sari cheezon se darne wale nahi hai he will not bow to life's hardship he is not going to sway by other people's criteria ki dusre log kya sochte hain he says the iconic lines you know the best lines used by great leaders who have changed the history of the world so he said the iconic lines are i am the master of my faith i am the captain of my soul so i take the responsibility for everything that happens in my life my actions are result of my own feelings of my own reactions i am the captain of my soul nobody else can control it i am invictus i am uncontrollable that is what the poet was trying to say i hope you all understood the poem very well if you still have any doubt you can any time post it in the comment section below i would be really happy to help you up uh you can just take a screenshot of this particular slide uh here i have mentioned three few of the figures of speech very soon i'll be posting the appreciation so if you need the appreciation let me know in the comment box i'll make a separate video for the appreciation as well और द राइम स्कीम ऑफ दिस पोएम इज ए बी ए बी अगर आपको नहीं पता कि राइम स्कीम कैसे फाइन करना है तो द लिंक फॉर द सेम आई गिव इट इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स यू कैन गो एंड चेक इट ऑल्सो आई आइकन जो है उसमें भी आप क्लिक करके राइम स्कीम का वीडियो देख सकते हो मैंने उसमें क्लियरली बताया कि राइम स्कीम कैसे फाइंड होता है सो द क्वेश्चन ऑफ द डे इज वॉट डू यू फ्योर द मोस्ट आपको किस चीज से सबसे ज्यादा डर लगता है यू कैन आंसर इट इन द कॉमेंट बॉक्स फिलो दिस इज योर पर्सनल रिस्पॉन्स क्वेश्चन आई वुड बी रियली वेरी हैप्पी टू your your comments thank you so much everyone if you would like the video if you understood it well kindly like it comment it and share with your friends okay each share each comment really motivates me also if you want me to make a separate video for appreciation let me know 
Thank you once again for staying with me till the end of the video. See you soon tomorrow in the live lecture at 7 p.m. Bye-bye. Take care.